Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Coffee with the Coaches podcast. I hope you can hear the smile in my voice because I have been chatting with Suzanne Taylor King, and she is delightful. Um, let me tell you a little bit about her before we get started. Since 2009, Suzanne has been supported entrepreneurs, practice owners, and leaders to grow personally and professionally. She's a tech wizard and a master certified coach. That's 10,000 plus hours with a unique coaching background and a genuine interest in seeing others succeed. The genuineness comes through. Suzanne, thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm already oh delighted. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It's been so fun already. Um, I don't know where we're going to go, but this will be fun. <laughs> Well, let's, we'll go back and I know we talked about this a little bit already, but let's talk about mm -hmm. your beginning, your sort of superhero coach origin story. How did you, and again, you, we kind of talked about this too. How did you discover that you already were a coach in practice and how did you move from there to starting a coaching business? Well, I was a dental hygienist for 25 years and I, I got exposed to health and wellness through that um the mind body connection you know food and sugar and helping uh patients quit smoking was a huge passion of mine because both my parents smoked and had disease issues from that mm -hmm. and i think my first coaching client uh numerous were in the chair you know and cleaning teeth and the beautiful thing was as a dental hygienist you could talk as much as you wanted and get your point across and people really can't respond. So um, it was definitely a captive audience. Like they're not going anywhere. So um, I had that going for me. And around 2004, uh, my mom got very sick and passed away. And one of the things that, because she was young, I think I decided at that point I'm not going to waste any more time. I was unmarried, just started dating. My husband did not have any children at that point. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, I, I want to have more effect on people's health, well being. Uh, I want people to feel resilient and gritty, like I do, to be able to handle life and just give a more positive impact to the world mm -hmm. i don't know what that's called but i went on a journey to figure out what that was called and what it would look like to actually affect change change of the human experience for people and i didn't know the word coach mm -hmm. i stumbled upon it years later and i was like hmm that's kind of what i do uh, I could go with that. So I stuck with that for a little bit. I definitely dabbled with mentor. I dabbled with guide. Uh, sometimes I call myself a eudaimonologist, which is a Greek word that means um, your inner best version of yourself. And I like to think of myself as somebody who pulls out that best version of people that I know they're capable of that maybe they don't see yet. Hmm. I like that word a lot. I mean, I'm just, I'm, a, I'm an etymology geek anyway, but that's like, mm. ooh. you often, I mean, obviously English is a very robust and agile language, but there's also all sorts of cul-de-sacs and like, you know, where it's mm -hmm. like, you're a coach, but you do like what you, you call yourself a coach, but you do mentor, you do guide. Like there's these verbs that you do that you execute yes. in the process of being a coach. It's just, English is so funny. And I love reaching back into a different language and being like, oh, it's, and, and then you read the definition and it's this poetic, beautiful statement mm -hmm. that completely encapsulates. German's a little bit like that too, sometimes. Where you're yeah. just like, oh, that's, that's the thing I didn't have a word for until now. And I like that coach is kind of beginning to, gather that meaning and I, I like well how's that pronounced again eudaimologist uh eudaimonologist so um eudaimonia is uh an ancient greek term for the ultimate goal the hmm. the goal of human existence is to pursue eudaimonia modern terms it's human flourishing so <laughs> that place where health well-being happiness and satisfaction and fulfillment all collide and you feel like the best version of yourself awesome let's let's dive in a little bit to your eudaimoniology how mm -hmm. you how you practice it good um, job i've been kind of <laughs> workshopping I'm, I'm kind of, i want to keep saying the word so i can get the pronunciation down uh -huh. <laughs> 
Um, well, somebody um, told me the other day that because I have it on my LinkedIn profile, that I should have the pronunciation like after it. Yeah. And I was like, how would I do that in a funny way? Um, mm -hmm. So I'm working on that. I'm working on a phonetic pronunciation of it that maybe is a little funny because I love humor. So mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can help me with that, that would be awesome. <laughs> we may have to workshop that later. I was my, okay. my brain, my, my little, my little humor brain is starting to turn a little bit. Okay. Uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about, let's talk about the nuts and bolts. Um, and I've been playing with different ways to ask this question. And I think I like, I've stumbled on one that I really like, who do you coach and how do you coach them? The who obviously being like, not just who they are, but like in what what area of their life that they're at, whether it's entrepreneurs, professionals, personal life, relationships, family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the how being one to one, small group, mastermind, key, like keynote speeches, books, all of the above, you know, all mm -hmm. that jazz. <laughs> well, I love entrepreneurs. More specifically, I love entrepreneurs that call their business a practice. Mm -hmm. And my little cheeky term is I help take your practice and help it turn pro, uh, nice. stop practicing, turn pro. Um, so doctors, dentists, other coaches, uh, even attorneys, I've worked with a couple architectural firms. And to me, it's all about the leader. It, it comes from the leader of the company down. So I've worked with some network marketing professionals even uh, who have large teams of people. Uh, so. The transformation A to B for me is really about becoming the best version of yourself. So does that look like overcoming procrastination? Does it look like overcoming uh, some other sort of self-sabotage? Most likely. Um, <laughs> but I would say my greatest accomplishment is helping someone be more confident with what they're doing and that's really the difference between practicing and turning pro um you know if your business if you're calling your business a practice just internally it's like oh you're still practicing you haven't quite gotten there yet so just that play on words to help somebody switch that like i don't have a coaching practice I'm a professional coach. And what is the difference between how that sounds and how that feels to your subconscious? It's it's huge, actually. So helping people realize that helps them step into their worth and their value. They end up working less, charging more, being more fulfilled. But they also have a calendar that's meditation time blocked off, eating right time blocked off. Mm. fun time blocked off yes <laughs> and of course a little bit of sleep time <laughs> oh, yeah that's number one for me anyway yeah me too that's one of the one of the best things i did for myself in my yeah. in my 40s what i've done so far for myself in my 40s is to mm -hmm. make sleep a priority mm -hmm. and just be like look i i know it's going to be tough sometimes you're going to have to leave things for yourself tomorrow yeah. that's mm -hmm. fine practice that work on that and then make sure you get, make sure you block off the right amount of time to sleep. You might, you won't always have the best night's sleep. Sometimes you'll be a little stressed. Sometimes maybe you worked a little too hard. Sometimes maybe you ate a little bit later than you should have, mm -hmm. but make sure you give yourself the time and make sure that you prioritize it. It's like, it really, it sounds so simple because it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just practicing it is something. Well, I think that's one of level. the things that once you, and this is what I typically ask of my clients, just try my way for two weeks like mm -hmm. just try a shorter eating window just try turning off electronics an hour before bed mm -hmm. just try setting that boundary of that time block for yourself in the morning and just try not checking email before mm -hmm. you do your meditation and tell me after you try it one day, one week, whatever, tell me how it feels. Mm -hmm. Tell me what awarenesses come from having that space between this and this. 
That was like a horror. That was like a horror movie moment when you brought the phone onto the screen. I almost, I, I almost jumped back. I was like, ah. Oh, don't show me that. It's usually not even on my desk, but because I was running in today, it's it's sitting here. Which yeah, even something as simple as just when I set my phone down, I instinctively put it down face down. Yes. Just it's just it's just something I was like, let me let me try this out and see if I can just you know if this helps. And it just be, it's become second nature now. It's just it's face down anytime I put it down anywhere, and it's like. And it, it it made a difference and it made a difference it immediately does. like first day and then it just keeps paying dividends down the road and it's just like yeah it's it really does seem like that's the core of your of your of your professional practice if i can use both words at the same time <laughs> yeah i read i read a book about um cal newport digital minimalism yeah. and it struck me deeply mm. and i will say i was kind of Ooh, check email once a day. What would that look like? That would look amazing. <laughs> cool. Not have my phone on the table when I'm having coffee with somebody. That would be even more amazing. Mm -hmm. Not taking my phone. I have a home office, have for six years. I've worked from home. Um, what would it look like if my phone charger was here in my office on my desk? And when I left my office to go out in my house, if the phone stayed here, wow. And you people listening, how do you how, how do you feel in your chest when you hear someone say that? How do you feel in your stomach when you when you hear when you hear that? Because I I feel a little certain kind of way in my in my stomach when it's just like, what do you mean mm -hmm. leave it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I I can remember the decision, my coach at the time we were exploring these things and he said well are you going to put your your word your words where your mouth is something, oh, your something money, like yeah. that. your money where your mouth is I think yeah money where your mouth is <laughs> and i said well what do you mean he said well you're going on vacation next week how about you don't take your phone <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then i thought about it and I thought, okay, I'm going on a cruise with my husband and my son. Who am I going to need to call? Nobody. My, my clients all know I'm going away mm -hmm. and I have nothing on my calendar. I don't need my phone except for it to be a camera. Hmm. How would that feel? Mm -hmm. And so I did it. And it, there was definitely some anxiety on the car ride. To, from South Jersey to New York to grab the ship. Natural. And, you know, I had that default where, you know, my husband's on his phone, my son's on his phone. I'm like, hmm. Look, <laughs> looking out the window. Yeah, I was. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I can do this. I can really do this. And I will say the first two days, I was constantly looking for the thing. Mm -hmm. I would look in the purse. I would look, is it on the count? No, didn't bring it. Oh yeah, don't have it. And it was like this, oh yeah, I don't have it. Oh yeah, I don't need it. Oh yeah, I didn't bring it with me. Okay. And about day three, there was this magical moment, sitting by the pool, having a cocktail. My son walks over to me and he was seven at the time. And he said, mom, aren't you working this vacation? And I was like, oh my God, what do you mean? He's like, well, you're always. And he said, I haven't seen you with your phone. And I hugged him and I felt like crying and I felt like, wow, I've actually made him feel like I'm not with him because even when I'm not working, I'm on my phone. And there was a core shift in me from that. And ever since then, it's if I'm making dinner for my family, the phone is in here. Like I don't wanna be working when I'm trying to be present with my family or my friends or even my dog, a dog walk used yeah. to involve listening to something, talking to someone, and I don't even do that anymore. And it's mental freedom, honestly. Yeah. 
it feels it feels it, even just talking about it like it feels so much lighter you know mm -hmm. just not, not quite weightless but just like you're a little, like floating just a little bit off the ground you know yeah Ugh. I, I want to I want to keep talking to you for freaking hours. I'm just like, <laughs> not, well, first of all, you are you're, you're very well spoken. You're really Thank excellent you. at communicating these like really like complex emotional states very simply, telling powerful okay. stories. Also, just greedily, I just kind of want to chat with you for like a couple a couple hours. But I should end this podcast, this recording. Tell people where they can find you. Tell people where they can learn more about you. Tell people where they can connect with you and chat with you. Where can where can people get more of this? <laughs> SuzanneTaylorKing.com and I have an incredible community that's actually it's been on social media for the past four years it's called the idea lab for entrepreneurs you see my dog's tail in the background there sorry um <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> and that community next week is launching on its own platform its own website off of social media and it's a vetted community with networking and rooms and conversations happening like like we're having right now awesome. and i get to make private introductions in that community which is super fun for me <laughs> and that is called the idea lab for entrepreneurs and you can find out all about it on monday on my website so make sure to check in on monday It'll be <laughs> this live. will probably air so today is when we're recording today is may 26th this will probably release in like a couple of weeks so oh perfect monday, timing. The, be monday memorial day memorial day so the 30 yes. 30th of may this will be live so by the time you hear this just go just just go. Type, type it in don't you know just type suzannetaylorking.com real easy <laughs> yep. And I assume people can find you on like LinkedIn if they want to just like strike up oh, a personal yes. conversation, connect. It's like it's yeah, yeah. absolutely. We were talking a little bit about that beforehand. How it's just like, oh yeah, I just met this awesome person on LinkedIn. Oh, I just met this awesome person on LinkedIn, and all of a sudden, I've got this bevy of awesome people that I know purely from just you know doing stuff on LinkedIn, connecting with people, seeing how people are are doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I should let you go. Thank you so 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 much for talking Thank to me today on the podcast. This has been really fun. <laughs> and My really pleasure. like lightning so thank you yeah, thank the audience thank for listening you. find suzanne connect with her she's an absolute delight and hopefully you enjoyed my presence as well and i will talk I to did. you again soon thank you so much <laughs> thanks